My name is Graham Brown and the company uh, is Northern Light Motors. So, um, tell me about your vehicle because it is a little unusual in the, in the uh, kit car world and it's also very innovative. Yeah, it's, it, it started about um, seven or eight years ago just as an idea really. I was getting a bit, uh, my background is in car design um, and as the transition to electrification started I was surprised that people were just putting loads of batteries in what were essentially normal cars uh, and thinking that that was the way forward so it was a case of thinking about you know if you stripped everything back to in terms of weight and, and made it really slippery aerodynamically is, is how, how much could you get away with um, in terms of batteries to get a decent range and we've managed to do that we've got an incredibly lightweight slippy vehicle uh, and our batteries are a fraction of what's required um, with traditional vehicles so you've uh, in terms of um, uh, the vehicle instead of instead of something the size of a big car this is designed for someone who say commun commuting or doing um, uh, sort of uh, solo uh, journeys which most people are this is just stripping everything back to the requirements to get a decent range so you could use it for commuting to work for example yeah uh, uh, yeah so it's essentially a commuter vehicle but having said that 80 percent of um, uk journeys are single occupancy um and only a few miles actually so it you know there's no reason why most people wouldn't benefit from from using something like this but obviously it's not something you'd take the family um to scotland in it's it's designed for relatively local commutes but you know 50, 50 miles 60 miles 70 miles a day up to 100 miles if you charge it at work are, are perfectly achievable achievable The controls to turn the display on. You've got the gear shifter on the left and the rear brake, rear handbrake. And you've got the lights on the right, horn, adjust the pedal assist, level one to five. And you've got the throttle and the indicators. And then the main switch, the battery's down, the main switch it turns all the power off.
Now, um, you said that the, the vehicle's been in the design process for several years. Um, in terms of construction, GRP monocoque? That's right, yeah. It's a, a G GRP monocoque, um, again, mainly because of, of the weight issues. So um, I've been a fan of um, monocoques, especially, in, and even GRP monocoques for a long time. So I used to have a Rochdale Olympic, which I think was the yeah. second um, GRP monocoque after the uh, Elite, I think it was That's the first. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I've always admired uh, the simplicity of that. Um, so yeah, from from quite an early early stage, um, I decided it was going to be a monocoque, uh, and because I've made lots of vehicles out of both GRP and carbon fibre at my time at TVR, um, there's obviously a lot of drawbacks with carbon. It's brittleness, um, you know, it's cost being another one, uh, and because this is a monocoque, it needs to absorb impacts and shocks over bumps. It's got suspension, but even so. If it was carbon, it'd be much more susceptible to, to breakages and they'd be very expensive to fix. Um, talking about the, the, the structure, you mentioned that you've actually incorporated crumple zones into the design or, or safety into the design um, for, within the shape of the, the vehicle. Do you want to uh, yeah. explain some of that as well? Yeah, so the, the shape of the vehicle, uh, a lot of people you know, can see lots of classic shapes in there, World War II airplanes and, and vintage vehicles. You know, but essentially it was designed from a, a clean sheet, uh, and the reason it's the shape of it is that the obviously it's a teardrop which is low drag. Um, it's a, an egg shape because that's the ideal monocoque shape, so it's got lots of compound curvature in it. Um, all of the, the the contactable surfaces are well above bumper height, which is important for safety. And even like the front, the front is like almost a vertical as opposed to diving down to the ground, so that if you impact into a, a car or anything else, you're not going to go under it. You're going to be deflected from it. At the rear, we've got the wheel, which is a, a an over-engineered bicycle wheel, essentially, which is fanta a fantastic crumple zone in its own right. Then we've got the composite suspension struts, uh, and then we've got a further area um, of luggage space, so there's an enormous amount of crumple zone at the rear, including the, the shape of the claw, which is uh, the kind of tail of the vehicle, which again is designed to deflect in impact so that if somebody rams into the back of you, you get pushed away rather than the vehicle going over the back of you. And you mentioned luggage space, which people wouldn't be expecting as well, but there's actually quite a fair bit behind the, the, the yeah. seats, isn't there? Yeah, there's 160 litres in total. There's a big chunk behind the seat. So, you, I mean, you could get a, probably, a, for a single person, certainly a, a week shopping in there. And there's a further area at the front, and you can even get longer items like guitars and even a pair of ladders down the side of the seat. So, yeah, it's Perfect pretty generous. for a window cleaner. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and and going back to the uh, to, to the electric power unit, obviously, w when we're talking about re reduced weight, uh, if you move away from the car world, there are electric bikes with wheels in the hubs. So uh, obviously that reduces a lot of weight as well, and that's the route pretty much that you've taken, isn't mm -hmm. it, with the uh, the powertrain? Yeah. yeah, it was a very deliberate um, decision very early on to to utilise. Uh, e-bike technology uh, which was you know when I started was probably in its infancy but you know it's exploded since then um, and the beauty of it is it's readily available it's cheap you buy it off the shelf and it fits it works it's, um, so and the other thing is is adaptability so a lot of customers some customers want mid-drive some people want hub motors and because of the way we've designed uh, the transmission now everything's achievable so uh, people can pick and choose any any bicycle components and the other beauty is if you know we've got a customer let's say in france or wherever which we have uh, a number of and they've got a problem with their chain or sprocket or derailleur they can go to the local bike shop and pick one up and get it or get it fixed yeah. which is a, a massive bonus now um you were talking about range. Um, uh, uh, most people will think, oh, it can only do 20 miles an hour, it's got a bike wheel, but that's not the case, is it? Well, legally, um, e-bikes in, in Europe and the UK are, are legally restricted to 15.5 miles an hour. Um, but, um, and it, this is, it varies from country to country, UK and Holland being good examples, um, there's a, a scheme called the MSVA scheme, which is uh, single vehicle approval whereby if you go through that scheme, uh, which isn't that complicated to do or costly, um, you can basically register it as a motorcycle of, of varying degrees of power. So we've, we've, we've got one in the UK, we've, we've got a customer in Holland who's doing that. So they're putting essentially more power, more speed, that we're allowing more speed. Um, and with that in mind, our, our motor controller, at which we fit standard, um, 
we can't legally sell it with a switch on that's illegal so but it does have a cable that can be cut which will release it from 15.5 mile an hour to unlimited which is in the case of the 250 watt motor that's uh, 30 miles an hour of assistance which for legalities the owner would declare obviously well they look, if the if yeah if the owner was to cut that cable uh, they would need to then register it as a just, legally as a just covering uh, the legalities of it absolutely you know, it's it's crucial yeah um now uh what sort of battery pack have you got and what sort of range does that give you? Again, um, because we've used or utilised e-bike e parts, we use e-bike batteries and they are incredibly uh, reliable and available and inexpensive. The lithium batteries, we use a 48 volt battery, we start off with a standard uh, 10, 10 amp hour which will get you about 30 miles with, with very little effort from yourself. It, it's a difficult one to effort specify. Effort being cycling as well, you've got pedals in there as well. Yeah, exactly. And it depends on the weight of the driver, it depends on how much luggage you've got, it depends on the terrain. So but well, it's a good ballpark. Uh you get you comfortably get 30, 40 miles out of a 10, uh, 10 amp hour, 16 amp hour, uh, which is only you know another hundred pounds or so more expensive. Uh, we'll, we'll get you 50 miles and then but the sky's the limit and the, and the other beauty of the of using the e-bike the e batteries they're on a, a slide in and a, and a key system so you just unlock the thing slide it out it's roughly the size of a, a coffee flask you can take it into the office and recharge it so with a 16 amp power battery you can do 100 miles a day comfortably yeah which for a, like a, a local vehicle which is what it's designed to be is is pretty excessive really yeah but if somebody wanted to do um 300 miles it's just a case of putting more battery in it which but it defeats the object because you're just putting more weight, weight. in there yeah. and more cost which which is against the ethos of the, the vehicle really um the kit prices, um, talk, talk me through um, the kit prices and, and how much work someone would have to put into uh, putting it on the road. Yeah, so we, the, the, the base model, if you like, the 4 to 8, um, starts at £4,500 as a, in kit form. And the only thing that, that doesn't include uh, are the, the hub motor and the, and the battery so, so and, the, and the display, which are all available as kits from, from anywhere, eBay or whatever. Um, and the idea being that people, lots of people want to do their own thing and put their own motor, they've got their own ideas. So that's what that, that product's about. Um, everything is built up. The, we, we bond the suspension in because that's a safety critical part. I've got it's actually bonded in. The bulkheads are bonded in. The suspension is bolted in. Every, all the holes are CNC drilled we supply all the nuts and bolts we supply the brakes we supply the wheels so with the exception of the the transmission that a the, the electrical transmission on the 428 we supply everything and it's you can you can basically bolt it together in a day it's you know if you can bolt together a, an ikea wardrobe you, you should be able to find you find your way around that easy enough and uh, the package is going further up the, oh, oh sorry yeah so the the 557 um that's at five and a half thousand pound uh f fully built five thousand pound in kit form and that is essentially the same thing but we we then supply the 250 watt uh, hub motor and the display uh, a lot of custom in fact just about everybody so far has gone for the rear view camera option which is a, a 200 pound option um which is nice because otherwise you're into putting wing mirrors on there which are not great in terms of drag yeah and it works really well so most people are going for that and a lot of people are just going from these with the standard 10, 10, 10 amp hour battery to the 16 amp hour battery few people have gone to the 20 amp hour battery um and that that one comes actually with a um an air tag built into it for for, for tracking uh, otherwise people can just you know a lot we, we get asked a lot about um security obviously the standard locks all apply uh, but in terms of, of tracking the, these new air tags which are available for android and apple uh, you know you can discreetly put them somewhere on the track and you can you get notifications as to its uh, location if it was to go missing which is which is nice Welcome to the Kit Car History File series where we'll be going through the industry's past. We'll be visiting old marks of long ago, some modern ones, some mostly older stuff, a lot of archive information with photographs and information on the cars they made, the people involved and what happened to them. 